to shoot time in the morning. Hey guys and gals, how's everyone doing out there? Today we have a very, very, very different special broadcast for you, okay? We are going to just ask you some questions about ourselves. Mr. Moore Henwick and myself really believe in building healthy relationships, not only with our students, with our peers, with our friends, with our family, it's very important. Matter of fact, we have been doing this long enough to know that sometimes we ask you questions like, hey, what does your mom do for a living? Or what does your dad do for a living? Where did your parents meet? And you give us a look like, I don't know. Guys, you're in seventh, eighth grade now. You should get to know your parents. They work hard to support you. Say, hey, mom, question. Where'd you meet dad? Dad, what do you do for a living? And no, dad, dad works for the company. Okay, what does dad do in the company? Your parents love you. They're working hard to support you. Find out what he does. You might be surprised. Your dad is the rocket engineer at Lockheed. Your dad built the first video game. Your mother is the world record holder for the 100 meter breaststroke. Ask your parents. Everything we talk about here, you got home with your parents, with your family, your brothers and sisters, you should communicate and talk to your parents. But we're gonna delve right into the questions we have for us. The first question we have is, how did Mr. Moore Henrik and I meet? Well, guess what? We met at Bret Hart uh, when I was still a pioneer doing weightlifting, helping out with the weightlifting program there with uh, Coach Zarlacki. I was also coming to Bret Hart and substituting, and Mr. Moore Henrik and I met, and we just, we just happened to like some of the similar things and hit it off and become pretty good friends as well as also colleagues and now here we are shoot time in the morning who knew <laughs> next question favorite food my favorite food has to be a big thick steak what kind of steak mr morning well i love steak cooked medium rare but really any meat will do well not any meat but good meat that's healthy lean but medium rare big thick and then with some lightly Tart, sweet barbecue sauce. He likes barbecue sauce. Like it, 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 very good. Big, thick, medium rare steak. Mr. Shoemaker, favorite food? Before I go there, because I know you, and I want to give him a real in depth experience here, I know that you don't like the ribeye because it's got a lot more fat on it. Too much fat. So you like more of a top sirloin, right? Because you like right. the thinner steak. Do you guys like fat on your meat, or how do you feel about that? For me, now my class, you already know. As of lately, my favorite food has been sushi. I love food, though. Uh, I am a meat eater. There's no problem with being a vegetarian. All kudos to you. I am a meat eater. I will eat the, eat the meat that you don't eat, okay? My favorite food is sushi. I like all kinds of food, though. I like something a little bit of everything. I like Italian food. I really, really like chicken parmesan. I like uh, kebab kumide. I like uh, any type of food that is meat that has a nice filling, yet fresh flavor to it. So I really like sushi. Right now my favorite roll, I think, is just the salmon nigiri. I love it. Now, this one's a pretty simple one. We're gonna ask you two questions though. What is your favorite color right now? <laughs> and well, what was your favorite color when you were a young man? I do like black. And as you know, I usually wear black because uh, you don't know it's dirty and you don't have to wash it. But I do laundry every once in a while. But right now, right now, today, if you were to ask me what you just did, today my favorite color is red, like blood red. Really? Not to be gross, but that deep, dark, maroonish red. That's my favorite color. How about you? My favorite color is navy blue. Hmm. Uh, it is a really dark version of navy blue. I've always liked the color blue. I've liked navy blue. Gray is my second favorite color. Uh, I was, grew up a Penn State Nittany Lions fan, and I really liked the way that the gray and the white and the blue uniforms went together, and it just happened to be, become my favorite color. Also the color of the deep ocean. There you go. The ocean's deep. Well, here's a question for you. In your career of teaching, what's your favorite sport to teach? To teach? You know, it's interesting. The sport I like to teach the most and I'm actually developing a new one. It's kind of 50-50. Right now, it's hockey. I love teaching hockey. I'm a big-time hockey fan. Go Penguins. I am heavily into 
getting people to come into an environment where you don't have to be the most athletic for our version of hockey. You don't have to be the most skilled, all right? You do have to hustle, you do have to use your brain, and you have to get and mix it up a little bit, but it's always great to me when you see a student who is maybe not so, uh, so much interested in becoming a high-level athlete and they're not really an athletic person, but they get in there and make a great play just from you know, being in the right place at the right time and using their wisdom. My second sport, but close coming up right now, is rugby. I have taught rugby the last four, four years or so, and I think that rugby is quickly becoming one of my favorite sports. How about you, Mr. Moore? Anyway? Well, my favorite sport to teach is badminton. And it's because you have students who are not very athletic, and they finally figure out how to get the birdie up and over that net. Absolutely. So basically, it's get the birdie up and over the net, then get it in, and then hit it where they ain't, and then hit it to their weakness. And you see students start off where they can barely serve the birdie over the net. Matter of fact, they can't even make contact from bracket to birdie. But you see Sasoi, small canoe steps of improvement, where they not only can serve it over the net, but then they start serving it to my weakness or their opponent's weakness, which is usually the backhand. They start having some success. So badminton is my favorite sport to teach. What's your favorite sport to play? You know, that varies. Mr. Mohammed, I played growing up. I ran the gamut of sports. I started with soccer. I played soccer for a number of years. I played baseball. I played football. I boxed a little bit. I, uh, they wanted me to wrestle. I wrestled in practice, and I stopped wrestling in high school for practice because they wanted me to lose too much weight. Uh, they wanted me to wrestle in 119. I was trying to be a football player was my, name, my main thing, and I, I really just I, I didn't want to lose the weight. And it wasn't a sport that I've been to. I just enjoyed wrestling around with my friends and being rowdy. And uh, track and field was something that we were very successful at at Gunderson. And, you know, out of all those sports, I'd have to say probably the greatest joys that I had was being successful at the safety position in football and track and field. But I would say overall throughout life, football probably would be my number one enjoyable sport. How about yourself? Same, football. I played football from, like, as you did, from what, eight years old? Yeah. Eight, maybe nine. I think it was about eight years old. Yeah, third third grade. And we both played football all the way up through. And so, started in Pop Warner, and now at 52 years old, I have a degenerative disc from football, the chiropractor tells me. So, there's risks in every sport. There's risks in badminton, all the way to football, everything in between. But I would encourage you, find that thing that you like, that you're good at, and try to polish up and shine in that area. So for me, as well as Mr. Shoemaker, we both shine in football. We're both kind of short and squatty, pretty quick, pretty fast. And the one thing I love about football, Mr. Shoemaker, we've talked about this, absolutely, is the contact. I absolutely love the contact. That's when great. someone would grab someone by the ankle and you knew they weren't going to let go, so you knew coming up to make the hit, if you miss that offensive player that you're going to hit, they still wouldn't get loose, and you just come through and truck load them. Absolutely. That was my favorite part of football was the contact. Yes. And we were both safeties. You were a safety, correct? Yes. I think my favorite part of football was the contact as well, too. I think my favorite thing, and it's a little different now in the NFL, but when the quarterback would throw a pass a little bit too high, and oh, the receiver yeah. had to hang out, and he has a safety go right up under and hit him. That was a great thing. Yeah, that's tough. Hey, question for you now, and I want you to think about this too. Buffets, all you can eat. Woo! Let me tell you. <laughs> Mr. Shoemaker's been known to do some damage at the buffets. All right, there's a couple all-you-can-eat sushi restaurants. Now, I don't know at all, so if you know of a great buffet restaurant, please come to the Google Classroom or email me. Let us know. Seriously, we want to know. Mr. Moore, Hemmick, and I, we've been known to do some damage in the buffets. All right, I believe last time we went to the All You Can Eat Shrimp Fest at the Red Lobster, where I personally just order fried shrimp across the board. What do you order at the Shrimp Fest? I order fried shrimp, but I also like the coconut flavored shrimp. Right. You like the pasta too, right? Pasta with shrimp in it. Yeah, the white sauce. Alfredo. Yes. Yes. 
But just being honest, because we believe in honesty as part of the honesty, respect, and responsibility, we probably ate maybe 15 refills of about 15, 20 shrimp apiece. What can I say? I like shrimp, particularly when you dip it in the cocktail sauce and the tartar sauce. What about yourself? Well, I, I love all you can eat. And Mr. Shoemaker, if we know we're gonna do all you can eat, a lot of times we'll fast from the morning till that time, which is usually five, four or five o'clock. Absolutely. So we'll fast, we'll get a good hard workout, and then we'll go eat all you can eat. You may have heard the beeper going off earlier. Bing. That was actually my watch. You know what that reminded me of hearing that sound? What's that? The time frame between ordering your second, third, fifth, fifteenth helping. I think what they do at these restaurants, they purposely try to wait. Because what happens to try to fill stomach? you up, expand the stomach. So they won't eat as much. But Mr. Shoemaker and I know that trick. So we're on and we order two or three at the beginning, then two or three at the second. So they just keep coming. Just Perfect. like harder, not smarter. There now, we go. one thing that he said that I really want to point out here in the name of health, we do work out hard before we go do that thing. Yeah. And if you work out hard and you push yourself and you are constantly exercising, you really could eat just as much as you want as far as calories are concerned because you're constantly burning calories. So, you know, we do eat, but we want to be responsible and also tell you, sure, we love to eat. But if you work out, all right, you can stay reasonably healthy. Now, if you don't work out, if you sit down and play video games and do whatever else and you eat like we eat, we probably have an extra 100 pounds or so on. So, all I'm saying is eat to your heart's desire. And if you want to continue to eat those things, make sure you're working out healthy, okay? Now, I'm going to get a little serious on this one. This one is kind of important because I know some of you guys may be struggling with this. And we may struggle with it in various parts of our lives. But we're going to go back to when we were in middle school. Mr. Mohamed, you don't have to say any names, but was there ever a time where you had a teacher that maybe you didn't like or you didn't get along with? And really the most important part is how do you deal with something like that? you got to go to class every day. How do you deal with someone you may be kind of feel treating you unfair or that you know you don't really have a good rapport with but you got to be there how do you deal with that that's a good question so i have had a number of teachers in the past in middle school that i didn't really enjoy being under their leadership so a lot of them were in math because i wasn't great at math i really didn't try my best which i regret i could have tried harder but I came to the conclusion of, you know, the old principle you and I've talked about, stiffen that upper lip and suck it up. Buttercup! I had to be there. I had to get a passing grade. So that's how I handle it. That's how I handle stuff today. You got something you don't want to do. You know you have to do it. Whining, complaining, or making excuses is not going to help. So I stiffen that upper lip, and I suck it up, buttercup, and I get it done. Personalities might not always mesh the way you want. You want a teacher. But don't butt heads. Just come together as a unit and try to get done what you need to get done because they have the power to give you the grade. You actually earn the grade, but you know what? The teacher is pressing the button on the computer to give you the grade. So be wise. That's how I handle it. You, you got to get it done. Why you complain? Making excuses won't make a difference. So stiffen that upper lip, suck it up, buttercup, get it done. Absolutely. How about you, Mr. Shoemaker? How did you handle things like that? Well, you know, just to be frank, and Jim, and Bill, when I was in middle school, not so much in middle school, when I was younger, though, there were times where I felt like I didn't always see eye to eye with a certain teacher. And I didn't handle it very well when I was younger. But I quickly learned that it does no good for you to bump your head up against the wall and fight the teacher. Now what I mean by that is, the knowledge that we teach you is not for us. We know this knowledge, that's why we're teaching you this knowledge. The bottom line is, you don't have to be friendly with anybody if you don't choose to be. But understanding the dynamic of the classroom, and as a student I learned this probably around seventh grade year, just get the knowledge in your head that they're teaching. You don't have to be, no one says you have to go out and have picnics with people, but the key being is, put your nose to the grind, get the information in your head, I have yet, as a teacher, now that I've been teaching for a good amount of time, seen one teacher that says, you know what, Johnny has, he's been getting A's on all his tests, he has been getting A's, turning great work, I just don't like him, I'm going to give him an F. Because that's not the way it works. You earn your grade. If you do what you're supposed to do, then you give 
nobody the excuse to say, hey, this person is failing. So all I'm saying is, do what, you, what you're supposed to do. You, you, you learn this stuff. And the way I started to look at it, because, you know, being honest, there were a few people that I didn't necessarily get along with in my academic career. But the way I looked at it is, I'm not going to let that person beat me. I'm going to put the knowledge in my brain. And then when I get that knowledge in my brain, I'm going to just demonstrate that I know the knowledge. I'm not going to be disrespectful to anybody. I'm not going to challenge them. Never even crossed my mind about being disrespectful because my father, I'm from the 80s, my father would have put that in line pretty straight. So just put the knowledge in your head. As Mr. Moore and Hemick says, do stiff it up and suck it up, butter. Stiff it up, run up and suck it up, buttercup. But make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons. Put the knowledge in your head. That's the whole purpose of school. The grade means nothing. You can walk out of calculus with an A. If you go from calculus with an A and then you get a job where you need to use the calculus and you really didn't learn, it means nothing. So put the knowledge in your head. That's the most important part. Did you see, did you see something out there? I think, there, there it is. That's a, there's more students out there. I oh, see. oh, baby! Kyla, Matt, Chris, Aiden, Christy, and there's Cameron, there's, oh, who's that behind? That's Mikhail, <laughs> Sarah, there's Jay, there's Mireille, Connor, there's, there's Dino, Yara, Nathan, Max, Max. there's Andy Cicciarelli, Max, there's a bunch of people out there. I love it. Wow. Oh, Mr. Mike, this is such a great thing. Why, why do we do this thing? Well, you know, building healthy relationships. And, and, and what's the purpose of our heart? What's HR squared? Honesty, Honesty respect, respect, responsibility. So, we challenge you guys. Are you going in to the next couple of days here? You're at home with your family. Just ask your mom or your dad or your brother or sister a question that you may want to know and you just never got around to ask them. They're not going anywhere, trust me, all right? You're here in the shelter in place. Just give them a quack, give them a try, answer the, ask the question, all right? Push out three. One, two, three. Push. Now, before we go, we got a special treat for you guys, all right? But we've been having problems with our editing, all right? So we're working on this here, all right? We're going to show you how to do sumo wrestling. You ready? Yeah. All right. Remember, when we do sumo wrestling, the, you can't see the circle, but the, the goal is to push the person out of the circle when the whistle blows. We'll give you a demonstration match. Ready, set, 